Hi everyone, thanks for watching another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about OpenSense and the firewall of OpenSense. Uh, here you have a network di uh, diagram, diagram um, showcasing the PFSense OpenSense router slash firewall and its location in the network. So here you see a switch going to the internal network, which is the LAN. And here you probably have a VLAN, a virtual LAN to an IPTV network for your, maybe for your television um, or maybe a security cam. And this is the connection going to the internet. So it really is at the heart of your network. You have um, incoming traffic from the internet to your internal network. And from the internal network where all the clients are located, going to this machine to the internet. In and out is very important that you know that. So incoming traffic, outgoing traffic. Um, without further ado, let's go to this machine. So here are firewall rules. But first, I want you to go to LAN and WAN. Uh, by default, um, of course, it's enabled. Make sure that this is enabled. And by default, we have we are blocking private networks and BOGO networks. Uh, and this is exactly for the WAN interface. So your outgoing connection going to the internet and all the requests coming from the internet going to this WAN interface to your local network. By default, this is on. So and you can do the... Um, the HTTP configuration here, so all your um, clients on your network will get an IP address, but this is usually something you set up on the LAN side of things. Um, let's go to LAN, so you can do the same thing here, enable the interface and block these networks as well. And you can set up an IPv4 configuration, so static or DHCP. Static meaning then that um, uh, every client will have a static IP address. DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol. So all clients on your network will be assigned a certain IP address based on uh, their MAC address and based on what VLAN they're in. So servers have a separate VLAN, for instance. Uh, mobile devices like a mobile phone, a tablet, they can have their own range. Uh, IoT devices can have their own range. Your television that's connected uh, to the internet can be in an own range in VLAN. So that will add another layer of security. But let's go to the firewall. So firewall rules. Let's go to the firewall rules. Because firewall rules. Floating. So these are the floating rules. Let's go to WAN rules. So now we're talking about the WAN interface. Again, this is the interface that goes to the internet and the inter all the requests coming from the internet going to your local network will have to, have to pass this WAN interface. So we'll add some rules. So a firewall can either pass connections, block, or reject connections. Um, so we're going to say pass here. Coming on this internet, apply the action immediately on match. Disable this rule later. So you, can, so you can set up rules. You can disable them later on when you don't need them anymore for a short period of time or longer periods of time, depending on your needs. This is coming from, this is inbound to the WAN. So this is coming from the internet. And out is going from your local area network to the internet. So it really depends on what you have. But let's say, for instance, you have a web server on this side. So we're going to apply WAN, incoming connection, IPv4, the protocol, TCP for a web server, UDP for a gaming server, or a combination of, um, and then have ICMP. But for the sake of this tutorial, we say we have a web server running inside our virtual, uh, inside of our local area network. So we are going to select TCP. Here, sources. So LAN address, LAN net, loopback.net, WAN net. What's the source? Use this option to invert the sense of the match. Sources, advanced. 
So this is where it gets interesting. Based on IPv4, your web server will have a certain IP address or uh, what I said earlier, you will have servers in a certain range, in a VLAN, in a certain range. So you can set here a port range. Um, so we are talking about HTTP or HTTPS connections from HTTP to HTTPS. You can set that up as well. FTP, if you have an IC, FTP server, ICQ for chat, destination, either a LAN address, destination port, so the source and the destination port range. Let's see if we have HTTP here as well. We do. Um, if you want to log incoming connections going to this web server, you can take this box, log packets that are handled by this rule. This way you can have an overview of all the things that go right and the things that go wrong. So you can later on fine tune uh, your firewall. Uh, you can set a category. So for instance, web server, description, web server, whatever you want. Advanced features, source OS. BSD, Dell, okay. You can also just select any, yes, any. <laughs> Don't make it too complicated, but you can you can determine the source of the iOS. This only works for the TCP rules, okay. You can schedule this rule if you want. So this rule is only active in the weekend, starting Friday at six o'clock and ending at the uh, Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock, for instance, um, if you have to, uh, it really depends on your needs, but you can schedule rules. So during the weekdays, other rules on the firewall apply than the weekends, for instance, depending on your needs. Gateways, the default gateway, and you can save. So now you added this firewall rule on the LAN. So this is coming from the WAN going to the LAN, right? Destination is a LAN address. And this is how you can set it up. It really depends on how your network looks like. You see here, this is the IP, IP range given to me by DHCP on this virtual box machine. Um, this is the gateway address because this OpenSense is the gateway to the internet. Again, if you have servers, you can uh, specify um, like an IP range for servers or maybe have VoIP telephones. You can uh, also give a range for, the, for those kind of devices. It really depends. You can set up VLANs here as well. Firewall, net. This is network address translation, port forwarding. This is also something that you need to set up if you go for uh, having a web server. So interface on the WAN, IPv4, TCP, advanced, the source or the destination, a single host or network. Um, again, the LAN address, for instance. Or you can fill up here, 24 is probably also possible. Yes. So let's say, for instance, this is, again, your gateway. And my website server is located at 10.0.100.1. And that's the destination. HTTP connections. Redirect target IP. Uh, let's see if there's also something about... Okay. You don't need to sp specify port 80 because uh, port 80 is already for HTTP, the protocol. So you don't need to set that up. Um, but NAT, network address translation, is basically um, you have a domain. So you have your own website.org uh, and it's hosted. The IP address uh, that's connected to that domain is um, on your local area network. So first you connect to the DNS. And the DNS will send you to the firewall 
and the file will see oh this is a request for the web server that's located on the on the local area network i will pass through this traffic and then the web server will respond from the local area network going back to the wan and passing the information on to the client so net is also important when you have some servers running and we have neat websites that uh, can tell you um you know what port is what what the protocol should be used but it's all possible to set it up here in the firewall so again if you have servers net is important and firewall rules it really depends you can you can um i will show you the categories so we uh, configured a web server uh because these are all the rules connected to this web server maybe we have a, a playstation or something And we <clears throat> do some gaming on there as well. You can give it colors so it's easier to recognize uh, in the firewall logging later on. So this is the web server and we give this the blue color. You can tweak this up to your needs, what you need, what kind of services you're running and what the data set you want to block. A lot of things can be blocked on browser level with browser plugins, for instance, but it's neither to do it on a network level on a dns level on ip basis and make sure that you uh tick the box uh to i'll go back floating here when that's where we were this rule i can add it again make sure that you log packets that are handled by this rule because um, you need to have some insight if this is working. Maybe your web 